Celtic knew a point would guarantee them the SPL title. The party started after just eight minutes. Key's pacey corner was bulleted home by Charlie Mulgrew in front of 13,000 jubilant Hoops fans and one exuberant manager. Any doubts it was to be Celtic's day and their title disappeared ten minutes later, and again Charlie Mulgrew was pivotal. His pinpoint cross was headed past Cammy Bell by Glenn Leuvens. Mulgrew's best known for having a sweet left foot, but proved his right one's not bad either, as he curled the ball past Bell, reinforcing claims by many that he's a player of the year contender. Celtic have handed out a few pastings to Kilmarnock over the years, and this was another. Once more, Mulgrew provided the ammunition, and Gary Hooper buried his 17th SPL goal of the campaign. Cue unbridled joy from Neil Lennon. The second half couldn't match the intensity of the first, and it took until two minutes before the end for Celtic to put the icing on their party cake. Joe Ledley grabbed their fifth and his ninth in all competitions. Then Gary Hooper hit Kelly for six with a magnificent strike, equaling Celtic's best ever victory at Rugby Park and sparking title-winning celebrations. After five titles as a player, it's Neil Lennon's first as manager, and he joins club legends like Jock Steen and Martin O'Neill. You know, I felt always in the, you know, one step behind those guys, but now I can sort of take a step to the side and walk with them. So, it means so much to me personally. It's, um, it's very hard to put into words. You, you know, been, this day has been a long time coming, but uh, to do it in the style and and the quality and the the energy and the, the pace. It epitomises the team, and um, I was delighted to finish this, the championship in style today. It's the um, greatest day in my professional career. With Celtic's victory in the early kickoff, Rangers went into the game knowing they'd lost their title. But their fans haven't lost their fight, sending a red card message of defiance to anyone wanting to liquidate the club. Rangers maintained the momentum they've built up over recent weeks within a minute of the start. Lee McCulloch taking advantage of poor defending to put the ousted champions into the lead. The hosts could have doubled their advantage when Edu was brought down in the box by Stephen Thompson. Sonia Luko took Rangers' eighth penalty of the campaign and became the third player to miss. Rangers did go two ahead just before half-time, and as the Saints' defence dithered, Andrew Little latched onto the loose ball and caned it past Samson. There was an astonishing start to the second half. Doran Goyen wrestled Stephen Thompson to the ground, and Willie Collum awarded a penalty. Paul McGowan sent McGregor the wrong way. A minute later, there was more theatre. Jerome Teslar given a straight red for his challenge on Sonia Luko. Lee McCulloch took responsibility and saw his effort saved brilliantly by Samson. Seven minutes later and Willie Collum pointed to the spot for the fourth time, Lee Mayer fouling McCulloch. Kyle Lafferty, who'd just come on, showed the others how to do it as he sealed Rangers' 3-1 victory. Striker Darren Mackey's been at Pataudry since 1998, but he's been far from prolific. The goal he scored to put the Dons into the lead was a superb piece of individual skill, but it was his first league goal since August 2010. For a player outside of the old firm to score more than 20 goals in a season is remarkable. John Daly volleyed home his 21st to further enhance his CV and bring United level. They say you should never go back, but Chris Clark and Aberdeen will be delighted the midfielder did return to Pataudry as he put the home side back into the lead, courtesy of a howler from Dusan Pernis. Ryan Jack's just been voted Aberdeen's Young Player of the Year, and he celebrated with his third goal of the campaign, heading the ball past Pernis to confirm the Dons' 100% record against United this season. Dunfermline are still without a win at home this season, and their boss Jim Jeffries will feel the loss even more since it came at the hands of his former club, Gary Glenn putting hearts into the lead. Alex Keddy must have thought he'd saved the pass from going two behind as he booted the ball off the line, but then saw his next attempted clearance go into his own net under pressure from Darren Barr. Dunfermline got a late lifeline, Hearts captain Marius Zelyukas deflecting the ball past Jamie McDonald. But there was no way back, and it's looking very grim for Dunfermline at the foot of the table. 
So there you go, Celtic have won their first title in four years and the 43rd in the club's history. Didn't they do it in style as well? 6-0 winners at Kilmarnock. Congratulations to Neil Lennon, uh, who adds his first title as manager to the five he won as a player. OK, we've got some uh, Scottish Cup semi-final action for you next Saturday on Sky Sports 1 HD. Aberdeen will be taking on uh, Hibs. That's from noon. And then on the Sunday, Celtic take on Hearts. 12.30 Sky Sports 1 HD. Mm. So on course for the double, Neil Lennon's so, on the yeah. phone. Morning, Neil. Hey, Lenny. Congratulations. Good morning. Thanks very much, guys. Thank you. So I imagine it was just a quiet night last night. No idea. <laughs> <laughs> hey, just, just looking at those pictures, Lenny. Very emotional at the end of the game there. It was, and um, it's been an emotional time as as manager over the two years. But uh, you know, the the, the finish it off the way we did. I mean, Chris, it's a very young squad, very young, and um, you know, our oldest player on the pitch was Sam Ross, at 27. So the babies really, and, and they're playing in a very intense environment and they've handled the the pressure brilliantly and and yesterday was was a very fitting way to, to finish the championship you you saw you know what it means to the fans up there paul will tell you himself and and it is a special club and, and when it's ruling like that there's, there's no better place to be now when you look back at the season obviously rangers have had uh, well documented problems but it was 5th of november you're 15 points down uh, to rangers who are at the top of the league what were you thinking back then well, we were three 0 down at Kilmarnock, ironically, and I'm walking down the twitch lane at half time, thinking if this gets any worse, I'm, <clears throat> I'm going to have a resignation in because I don't think my trade could have took it. And you know, there's a team I put together, and I'm thinking to myself, you know, if this is the best you can do, then you know you might have to let somebody. You know, I had no pressure from the board, but I'm thinking you might have to let somebody else come in and and, and take over. But we we rallied, you know, we got back at three three, and then all of a sudden we we found our consistency, and then. We went on a brilliant run in the league where we, we won 17, 18 consecutive league games and and we never really looked back after that. And, you know, it's all credit to the players. They, they performed magnificently and um, I couldn't be more pleased for them. What's the spirit like? I mean, obviously you've won a championship, but is it one of those where they'll they'll always be in touch forever and a day, those boys? I like to think so. Yeah, there's, there's great uh, solidarity among the squad. and. We 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 put together. I mean, it's difficult to to compete with the Premier League in terms of finances and and trying to you know buy players and get the wages. And so what we've had to do is is go abroad and and look at at the younger talent and under the radar the likes of Kai Almanyama, Keeson Young, and they have been consistently fantastic this season. And you know, again, as board members will tell you, you need to be resealable value on it as well. And these players have come in, Gary Hooper, Matthews, Ledley from the Championship have performed brilliantly. And there is a, there's a connection there, they're, they're very, very united and it's a great dressing room. And I've got a great captain in Scott Brown who, who I'm, I'm really pleased for that he's led the team to the Championship because um, he, has, he has been the glue that's kept the, the squad together this year. Mm. So obviously it's congratulations on this Championship, but I'd imagine thoughts are already turning to that semi-final next Sunday. How keen will he be to do the double this year, Neil? Well, very keen. I mean, you know, we, we lost the League Cup final then and uh, that was a blow uh, because we wanted the treble. I mean, I'm talking trebles here. When, when I first came in, you know, it, it would have been great just to win a trophy, but the, the, the turnaround has been so vast and the consistency levels been so good that, that these guys are, you know, we, we've got a chance of making our fourth domestic final in a row, which is, is tremendous for such a young squad. Um, Hearts are playing very well at the minute and we know it's going to be yeah, a very difficult game. I mean, no, after the League Cup final, anything can happen on any given day, so we will have to be at our very best. Lenny, I know it's th you know not the easiest job in the world, certainly for your first ever job to take over at Celtic, but the supporters <laughs> have been great and it, it's been a wonderful time for you. I'm sure you'd like to thank them as well. Oh, they've been magnificent, Chris. I mean, if you go to Celtic Park now, the atmosphere is just incredible. We have a, a section of the fans who've been the colour and the singing and... And the atmosphere, regardless of how the game's going, it just seems to be, you know, bubbling along. And um, yesterday was, was special. We had three quarters of the ground, and it was just like a home game. And the, the players just fed off that, and they finished the season with a with a real flourish. It was, it was a great day, you know, when you work for days like that, and uh, when they come around, and they don't come around very often. 
you have to enjoy it. And I think everyone associated with the club did. And from myself, on a personal account, I can't thank the supporters enough. I know you're an adopted Scot now, but any chance of coming down to England and coming sitting on the sofa with us? No, I'm not sure, Cammy, no. <laughs> <laughs> you never let me down, do you? <laughs> I'll put on a different one for you, don't worry. <laughs> this, uh, this, is a, this is a special <laughs> one for Easter the on the telly. <laughs> If your TV's going funny, we apologise to everybody. It's his shirt. It's not the television that's causing these problems. Neil, thanks so much for Top joining us. Yeah, thanks, thanks. Good to see you, Paul. You're looking well. You too, Neil. Well done, mate. Well thanks, done, thanks, Delighted Cheers. for you. Cheers, thank you. Cheers, thanks a lot. Good stuff. There you go. Congratulations to Celtic. Uh, another championship for them. We've got all the championships.